This is Marketing in the Digital Age, Part 2. My credentials are that when I worked at Exxon Chemical, I was the marketing systems specialist for one of their business units called Intermediates. And I worked with the sales force, I worked with the sales offices, I worked with marketing technical service, and I worked with the headquarters customer service center. So I never took marketing in college, but by the time I was done working for Exxon Chemical Intermediates, I was seasoned about what marketing is all about. When I moved to Second Life, my second career was in entertainment and arts, which of course has a lot of marketing in it as well. Music and uh, lately dance. So our goal today, Magua and I, is to catch your interest in at least one aspect of the material we gave you today. We want to catch your interest. Something from today that you will pursue in your project for next week, that you will pursue for your degree in marketing, that you will pursue for your career. I want to remind you from the last talk I gave on what is the definition of the metaverse. There is more than one. We are talking about marketing in the metaverse. Digital marketing is marketing in the digital age. The metaverse is an evolving ecosystem of digitally and physically connected apps. But there's more. The metaverse is a 3D immersive computer simulation using sight and sound. But there's more. The metaverse is a web-enabled instant online two-way communication between humans and things. So for the first slide, Lindex is a real currency exchange for the Second Life virtual economy. It has been stable for 19 years, as long as Second Life. There is even arbitrage. When you can buy linen dollars and sell linen dollars, people make money from the difference in exchange rates. That was the second way people became millionaires in Second Life after Anchi Chung and real estate. Tilia is a company that supports Lindex. Tilia, T-I-L-I-A. It supports meeting the regulations about online money across all 50 states in the United States and across Europe. Tilia has been stable for seven years. It is an example of a digital wallet service. And just this year, it partnered with J.P. Morgan, who's put a member on their board of directors and is investing heavily in it. The Second Life Marketplace is where producers sell using in-world stores I could take you to a store right now and can buy some of that clothing or those airplanes that Magwa showed you. And they would collect your money for free, quote unquote. Well, not exactly for free because they're renting space to have the store. Producers can also sell using the online store, which is uh, you can click from the top of your viewer or go to directly on the web, and Linen Lab will take a 10% commission from your sales. So that is the Lindex virtual economy up and running for 19 years. Virtual economies are different when it comes to the cost to replicate, store, and distribute products. 
The cost to create a digital product is comparable to real life. If you designed an airplane that would fly in Second Life, you have to pay someone to do the three, the mesh modeling, the scripting, uh, the making it look pretty, uh, design the user interface, the controls, just like if you were doing Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the cost to create a product is comparable in virtual and physical economies. The cost to produce the first time product is comparable. You have to make the airplane and uh, test it and spend a lot of time on it to get it right, just like in real life. But after that, after that, every time you sell it in world, you made a digital copy that was quote unquote, zero cost to replicate. It was quote unquote zero cost to distribute because you just put it on the marketplace or put it in your store. You're not sending it out to physical uh, malls in the real world. You're not shipping it. And Mago pointed out to me, you're not paying to store it on inventory. You don't have a lot of inventory overhead problems. On the next slide, ten percent of the world's adult population are using 3D metaverse platforms. What is a 3D metaverse platform? The number one is Roblox, and Magla gave you a couple of examples of big brand names using Roblox. I attended a presentation by the marketing director for Roblox given in Second Life two years ago. So they have 200 million monthly active users. Second Life has 1 million monthly active users. Minecraft, which is now owned by Microsoft, has 180. Roblox is very well marketed as well as being very popular and it has a target audience. It's basically, I would say high school and early university. It is a way to learn to make things digitally and to sell them and learn about marketing. Minecraft and Second Life are popular, but I personally do not think that they are well marketed. If you don't see stories like Gucci and Chipotle using Minecraft, and Second Life, at least I haven't found any so far. Next star. Physical brand marketing is moving into the virtual environment. Biometric mobile apps for eye testing and eyewear are very popular and available on Apple and Google stores. Test your eyesight. Test your fitting for your virtual headset. Order your glasses online without going to the doctor. Doctors don't like that, but you can do it now. That is a metaverse. Mobile apps for virtual clothing and accessories to try them on. I was getting ready for this talk and look at the bottom left. Walmart has a be your own model. If you are willing to send, upload a picture of yourself, you can try on Walmart's clothing and see how it looks on your body. Warby Parker eyeglasses top right has an AR app where you can see what the different glasses look like on your face live kind of like a Snapchat filter, and then you can order those glasses. L'Oreal has an AR app. You can try different colors of lipstick and cosmetics on a picture of yourself looking in the smartphone app. And Snap AR not only has the ability to test clothing from a catalog on your picture of yourself, they are a AR service. They want to sell you their service so your products can be put on an online catalog. This is still, uh, uh, they're pitching this business, Snap AR.
the trend is to personalize your self digital representation avatar as much as possible. And Magua talked about what it might cost him to personalize his avatar even more. Some people prefer to recreate their physical experience in the metaverse. I worked with three different clients, the chairman of the MacArthur Foundation, uh, Norman Mailer, who is a producer, famous TV producer in the U.S., and uh, a reporter, Hal Eisner, for a news station in California when that was a big rage. So you would take a picture of yourself, it would be uploaded, and we would hire someone to fit it to an avatar. But some people prefer creating different digital appearances. Next slide. Virtual brand marketing has created loyal in-world consumers. These are some brands that are over 10 years old in Second Life and still going strong. I asked a friend of mine who is very much into avatar aesthetics and clothing. And here are the stores she recommended for female avatars, for example, just because. For male avatars, Deadpool, and for both male and female, Contraption. She is also office manager for a firm of architects and owns three separate regions in Second Life with three separate homes completely decorated with homes, kitchens, and furniture. She recommends La Galleria and What Next? By the way, in world means sold and bought and used entirely within the virtual environment. Some virtual brands have crossed platforms. Abranimations has been making motion capture animations for avatars for as long as I've been in Second Life. I have like 30 different dances. You can have jazz dances, you can have uh, classical dances, ballet dances, salsa dances, club dances. Uh, each one is like this one here, the theater jazz freestyle, is 20 dances for 1,600 lindens, which is about six dollars, six euros. And once Abranimations made theater jazz freestyle, every time somebody buys it, ka ching, six euros, no cost whatsoever. They have an in world store and they're online. Abranimations is now in Science Space, which is a second 3D metaverse with its own virtual economy that runs out of Europe. Greedy is a game that started in Second Life. I asked Mago and he knows that he's played it. And it has also been crossed over into Science Space because the guy who invented it moved over and became the lead developer for Science Space. But his wife still runs his Second Life business for him. So if you can make it in a metaverse tool, and if there's more than one place to put it up and sell it, then there's a valid uh, marketing model for you. The strong markets are fashion, entertainment, and wish fulfillment. Magua mentioned uh, yachts and jet planes and houses. Let's slide. Virtual currency marketing is moving into the physical environment. Pilia and JP Morgan is a huge, in my opinion, development. Pilia is proven to support legally uh, meeting legal requirements for 
turning money from real world currency into a virtual environment and back. Once it can do it for Second Life, it can do it for any other virtual environment that needs a digital wallet and doesn't want to pay to build their own system that meets the requirements of 50 different states of the United States and the European Union. From eBay, if you know eBay, came PayPal, which was one of the first e-payment systems. And PayPal split off and became a separate service. From Amazon came Amazon Web Service, which split off and became a separate service that people run entire virtual worlds on, including Second Life, by the way, and Science Space. Now, as Maga alluded to, there are two virtual economy models. I feel that both of these are very much works in progress. The first model is to make money in world and convert it to real world, just like Abranimations. This is proven and has been running for 19 years in Second Life. The trouble is, it's still peanuts. You're making hundreds of dollars, not tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands. It's, it's, it's peanuts and it's a work in progress because of the partnership with J.P. Morgan more of this could happen. The second model is to use the in-world to make more real money by publicizing your product, like Snoop Dogg or something. I don't think many people are going to spend 200,000 euros to hang out with Snoop Dogg online. You're not going to sell a lot of those, but it adds to his brand name. So whatever he's spending at the sandbox to have that and whatever he's spending is uh, for his marketing agents. By the way, there's a career for you, market for Snoop Dogg. Um, he's doing it to enhance his presence in the market. I feel that these efforts are mostly pie in the sky. Some of them look promising, but I'm personally not convinced yet. However, <laughs> The future is yet to come. Some of these are issues that will get resolved wherever the money is. And these are things for wise marketers like yourselves to learn to use how to blend virtual and physical tools and platforms. So to recap, there are two virtual economy digital marketing approaches in play. One, create, sell, and buy virtual products and services within the virtual world. Periodically cash out for real world money. Two, create virtual products and services in the virtual world and advertise and promote them to create real world interest and sell your real world products like cosmetics and uh, clothing lines. Both are encouraging. Early results are encouraging. Both approaches are works in progress. <laughs>